So today I thought I'd take a look at something that's not from a video game, movie or anything like that. Today we're going to delve into the science behind the YouTube channel How Ridiculous. Hello everybody and welcome to the Science Hub, where today we're taking a look at the YouTube channel How Ridiculous. Now, if you're not aware of this channel, which would be pretty tricky as they're over 205,125 times larger than my little channel, How Ridiculous consists of three Aussie lads, Brett, Derek and Scott, dropping objects varying from giant rubber band balls to jet skis from the 45 meter tall tower called the Leaning Tower of Jinjin, which can be found at the Gravity Discovery Center in Western Australia. Hence why most of their video titles say that they're dropping axes onto cars or something similar from 45 meters, that's how tall the tower is. But today, we'll be focusing specifically on their video, Can This Solid Glass Ball Survive a 45 meter Drop? Which, surprise surprise, finds the lads dropping solid glass balls of varying size and mass, from 1 kilogram to 15 kilograms to the largest glass ball being about 40 kilograms and 300 millimeters in diameter. But before the lads get into dropping their balls, First they used them to light a fire and carve the How Ridiculous logo into their mascot Rexy. So let's have a look at how that happens. Now you may think that this is a rare occurrence, but there are many articles of people's homes getting set on fire due to crystal balls. Now the reason for this is actually quite simple. The heat waves from the sun are transversal waves, meaning that they oscillate perpendicular to the movement of the energy. When these waves pass through the glass sphere from the air, they're moving from an area of low density to an area of high density. This causes the light to refract and change its direction inside the glass orb. This is best exhibited if you think of light as like a car. As it travels from an area of low density to high density, the front wheels will hit the glass at a different time. This will cause the car to turn towards the area of low density towards an invisible line called the normal which lies at 90 degrees to the object's surface. Then the car will drive straight from the point the second wheel enters the new medium, and then when the car reaches the border point between the two densities, it'll change direction again, but this time, it'll turn away from the normal. This refraction can be used to focus the infrared waves of thermal energy onto a single point, by moving the object closer or further away from the lenses. And once focused, these electromagnetic waves are able to scorch or even burn whatever they're focused on, especially in Australia where How Ridiculous is based. So after starting fires and scorching their beloved Rexy, the lads get into the main meat of the video, dropping glass balls from various heights and seeing if they survive, and also giving some hypotheses as to how much of the ball will be left after each drop. Of course, the balls don't survive. But instead of the complete destruction expected, you see a very interesting phenomenon. All of the glass balls, no matter how high they were dropped or how heavy they are, upon smashing produce a cone of glass with the impact point at its peak, and multiple ripples along the glass spreading out from the impact point. But before we get into why that happens, let's take a look at the drops themselves. We can figure out the amount of force they'd inflict upon the sheet of metal at the point of impact. We know the weight of all the balls, and we know that they're accelerating due to gravity. All we need to do is work out the amount of drag affecting the ball and subsequent speed at which it falls, and we're all set. This is going to be using some of the equations covered in the first science of Minecraft, so if you want a bit of a refresher, you can check it out there. The main thing we need to remember is that all objects in freefall, that is, falling straight down, will experience only two forces. The weight, or gravitational force, which is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the gravitational field strength of whichever planet you're on, and the air resistance, or drag, which acts against gravity and depends on the speed of the object during freefall. This can be calculated using this equation. In this equation, d represents the drag coefficient, the inverse of the lift coefficient we talked about in the Ratchet and Clank video. It's actually quite convenient for us that we're looking at a sphere, as these have been widely studied in relation to drag coefficients. When looking at glass balls used in the video, and taking their falling velocities into account, we can find that their drag coefficient will be around 0.5. So now that we have the drag coefficient, we need to know the atmospheric or air density. Once again, this is relatively easy to find, as we know that atmospheric density is impacted by atmospheric temperature. 
So we can find a temperature in Perth during the 9th of September when this video was most likely filmed based on the temperature and the ability to scorch Rexy. This was found to be between 23 to 25 degrees. At these temperatures, the density of the air on average would be 1.19 kilograms per cubic meter of air. Now we need to find the cross-sectional area of our sphere. Once again, this is very easy to do. All we need to do is multiply the square of the radius of the sphere, which is 0.15 meters, by pi, and this gives us a total cross-sectional area of 0.07 meters squared. So there we go. All we need to do now is find the velocity of our falling object. This is easy enough to figure out, as all we need is the distance fallen, 45 meters, and the time taken to fall, which is just over three seconds. That is Whoa! Oh! So we can find the falling velocity of our ball to be about 15 meters per second. So now we just need to put these into our drag equation and get the air resistance acting upon the glass ball. This gives us a drag force of 4.6 newtons, but this is actually kind of misleading as this equation doesn't take the fact that acceleration exists into account. This means that every second the velocity of the ball increases by 9.81 meters per second and as such the drag impacting the ball will change proportionately to the change in velocity. Now I'm pretty bad at doing mechanical physics so for the purpose of this video I brought in someone who's a bit more adept when it comes to mechanics and they very kindly made an excel spreadsheet which shows the variation in not only the drag but also the velocity of the ball, the height it's at, the acceleration it experiences and the resultant downward force acting upon it all relative to the time of the fall. We can take the velocity right before the impact from the chart and use it to find the momentum our ball had right before the collision. This is done using the equation momentum is equal to mass times velocity. And for the purpose of this equation, we'll simply use the velocity right before the impact. Then all we need to do is work out the force during the impact. For this, we use the impulse equation. Force is equal to a change in momentum divided by the impact time. For the purpose of this video, we took the impact time to be 0.1 seconds. This gave us a max impact force of 50.1 G or 19.6 kilonewtons when taking the drag into account. So there we go, we now know the impact force of our glass balls. So now it's time to take a look at the Coney Joni effect seen all throughout the dropped glass spheres. No matter what, all the glass spheres exhibited the same phenomenon when dropped. Rather than smashing completely as expected, instead, the glass orbs only smashed around the point of impact, leaving a cone-shaped structure and the rest of the orb was pretty much unharmed. This is what's known as a conchoidal fracture. These fractures are common in brittle materials including flint, glass and obsidian, and are characterised by their curved breakages which resemble gradual curves or muscle shells. With the name conchoid coming from the Greek word for muscles, conchoides, Glass is what's known as an amorphous solid, meaning that it has a non-crystalline structure. These structures are made up of long chains of atoms, though unlike materials such as diamond, they're not arranged in a regular pattern. In normal glass, this network is made of mostly silicon and oxygen atoms, with occasional interruption by metal ions such as aluminium, calcium or sodium. In the case of glass balls, they fracture to form a cone shape due to their spherical shape. This causes the force to be applied to them at one point upon impact in the ground. As you might notice, the peak of the fracture can always be found at the edge of the sphere. This is due to the point at which it hits the surface of the sheet, experiencing strong compressive forces. Whilst the peak of the sphere compresses, it puts the surrounding points under tension. This is because they want to keep moving in the direction of the force, which in this case is downwards. This causes these parts to shatter and tear off from the sphere as you can see in this slowed down footage, leaving a cone behind. So there we go, a bit more of an in-depth look into the physics of falling taking into account air resistance which barely affects our glass orbs due to their shape and small surface area to mass ratio. And the all impressive Coney Joni effect? Well it's just conchoidal fractures upon glass spheres and are just the effect of glass's non-crystalline structure. Thanks for watching. 
I really enjoyed covering the science in these videos, so you can expect more content like this kind of stuff in the future, looking at YouTuber videos and looking at the science behind them. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any particular scientific subject or game that you'd like to see me cover in future videos then please tell me in the comments down below. But until then, this has been the Science of How Ridiculous. I'll see you next time.